if you really want to test how good you are at maths, especially when it comes to A-level maths, you want to be attempting questions like this. Now this has come from what's called the Advanced Extension Award for A-level mathematics, which is equivalent to step two if you get a distinction. This hour is three hours long and it's non-calculator. This is an integration question, find the areas, you get really weird notation, it's quite intimidating. In fact, I got this question from the 2012 paper, which is the one that I sat as a 17 year old and I got a distinction. So I must have answered this question correctly. It's the first time I've looked at it since then. So let's see if I am better at maths than I was as a 17 year old. Probably unlikely. I was a beast back then, isn't it? So we got this diagram. I've cut out a lot of the yap. It says write down the coordinates of P and Q in terms of A and B. The equation of the graph is this, that is a cubic. Well, I can clearly see P being the root is when this bracket is zero, so minus A and Q with the squared bracket means that is, uh, um, you could think of it as a quadratic at that intersection, so that'll be B. I'm not gonna write that anywhere apart from here maybe, guys, that is a really easy part of the question. At least we have bagged ourselves two marks in it. I'm not gonna write down the full coordinate though. Show that G, the area of the shaded region is given by this. Okay, now, we need to integrate this function between minus a and b. Now, it looks easy, but I don't think that's the case because they have a plus b to the power of four. That's a bit of a sticky one, I can't lie, because what some students might be thinking is to expand all the brackets, right? I actually don't think that's a good idea because it's a plus b to the power of four. I guess you could integrate term by term, but it's gonna get quite messy. Now, I can't remember what I did as a, as a 17 year old, but I think I might want to do this slightly differently now that I'm a grown man in it. What might, what might be a better strategy than just expanding all the brackets, which will take absolutely ages? I know you get three hours in the exam, but still, trust me, time goes very fast. I actually think using integration by parts here is nicer because by adding one to this power, I get this cubic yeah, because we're going to be using Liddy, right? So I want to try and keep it in this form as much as possible. So I'm actually going to use parts here. So this is something a little bit unique for us. So it's all about equipping yourself with different techniques. All right, so I'm going to do some, some work here, but let's do our Liddy. So we're going to leave the first term, integrate the second. It's a... Uh, linear inside, so it's a power function. My guess, you guys should be very used to me making guesses by now, is that the power is going to go up by one. We differentiate that to check our answer. You differentiate what's inside first, that's one. Bring down the power, knock one off the power. But we don't want to integrate this, we just wanted this, so we're going to do a third of both sides. So I get a, plus, a minus b cubed over three, x minus b, sorry. x minus b three, cubed over three. Now, when it comes to like really complicated integrals like this, I actually want to start evaluating the limits as I go. So usually what we do in A-level maths is we do Liddy maybe twice, three times, depends. We just get the final answer and then we sub in the limits. But what we can start doing is we can start subbing in the limits here because this is part of our evaluated integral. Maybe it's gonna make our lives a little bit nicer, okay? So what we've done, we've left, integrate, differentiate. X plus A differentiates to one. Then these two brackets are always the same. So X minus B cubed over three, and then we obviously have minus A B. So let's start completing something. So here we're gonna sub in B. We're gonna get B plus A. We're gonna get B plus A. That's in there. Now when you sub in b into here, it's just gonna give you zero, which is another reason why keeping it in this form was actually much nicer, because we know these were the roots. So by keeping it in this form, we know that we can start canceling out terms. So plugging that in there, it goes. Now subbing in minus a, so we're gonna minus. Subbing in minus a is good for us, okay? But subbing, well actually that just gives you, wait, what am I doing? I'm summing this, b plus a, that goes to zero. Wait, hold on. 
Ah. This happens a lot when you're doing advanced extension award and step questions. You start to bug out because it starts to get really messy. Something in B, yeah, that's cool, but that is just giving you zero. And here, that's just going to give you zero. So actually, by subbing in, we're just getting zero, which is great. So this is gone. We can ignore that. This third, I'm going to take outside. So I get minus one third integral between minus a, b of x minus b cubed dx. Also, this is annoying. We could do the exact same thing, right? So what's my guess? This is now really nice. My guess is I'm going to add one to the power. Let's differentiate that to check. That's just going to become four lots of x minus b cubed. I don't want the four though, so I'm going to do a quarter of both sides. We do have that minus third there. So the minus third and the quarter make minus one twelve. Now let's start inputting our limits. So we have x minus b to the power of four between minus a and b. All right, so uh, summing in b still gives us that same situation where it becomes zero minus subbing in minus a here. So minus a minus b to the power of four. The two minuses here cancel. Now here, these two negatives, because it's power four, won't make a difference. You can factorize out minus one, and when you raise it to the power four, it just becomes one. Let me show you my work in there. So when you factorize out minus one, just like the binomial, expa the binomial expansion when the, coefficient, when the number here is on one, for example, we factorize, right? But we have to maintain that power then this will become a plus b to the power of 4. And that is just 1. And this gives us our solution, which is beautiful, mate. Very satisfying when we can get six marks here. All right, so I'm going to write down that result. And then we shall move on to part c, which is eight marks, which I'm not looking forward to. So let's write down our result. So. We have part B, G is A plus B uh, to the 4 over 12. The rectangle PQRST, interesting that there's five letters there, has RST parallel to QP. QP is this, so the rectangle is something like this maybe. Uh, PT and QR parallel to the y axis, that's the vertical. Okay, so the rectangle is like that. Show that G, so when you take this and you divide it by the area of that rectangle, it's K, where K is independent of A and B. I actually don't know how people come up with these questions, it's crazy. So, I know the base length of it is just B plus A, right? So the base length is B plus A because you're subtracting those. We need to work out the height, which they did tell us in the question that this is the maximum. So we're gonna have to work out that maximum. And we're gonna have to do that by differentiating. Okay, so we're gonna differentiate this. So dy by dx, this is a cheeky product rule. Especially if you're doing these kind of questions, if you're still using u and v guys, come on man. So differentiate the first term, one, times the second plus, differentiate the second, so you just bring down the two, knock one off the power, which is one times the first. Okay, so differentiate the first times the second plus differentiate the second, yeah, it's just a power function, so you bring down the power, knock one off the power, times the first. And what are we doing? We're gonna make it equal to zero, and we're gonna solve. And we know some solutions do not exist. Well, we know the solution we don't want, and that's this solution here, because that's going to give us the minimum point, which is this x minus b. So we can divide through by x minus b because we are not interested in that solution. That cancels that. We're just left with x minus b, and this cancels this. Remember, this is all one term because you're multiplying, right? So I guess you could have it like this as well. Two lots of x plus a is zero. So we have x minus b plus 2x minus 
2x plus 2a is 0. So we have 3x is b, b minus 2a. And then we're going to divide by 3. Obviously, that's not good enough because we need the y value, don't we? So we're going to have to resub that into here. Hopefully, things simplify nicely. And then we're going to find the area. Ugh. So y. If you see an 8-mark question in these papers, you know it's p. So we have b minus 2a over 3 plus a. Now, I'm going to write like this because I'm going to start manipulating it within this rather than writing the whole thing again. x, which is b minus 2a over 3 minus b squared. So writing these all over 1 times tom bomb by 3. What do we get? Uh, we have y is b minus 2a plus 3a is b plus a over 3. Oh, this works out really nicely, isn't it? Just double checking this. Oh, is b minus 3b. I was going to do minus 2a plus. I was going to do those two. So I get b, b, bruh. b minus 3b is minus 2b minus 2a over 3 squared. Now there's some cool things we can do here. Namely that minus 2, we can factorize that out, right? So I get y is a plus b. Let's do some alphabetic order. Now if you factorize out minus 2, you need to keep the square on it. And then you'll have b plus a. So we get 4. Lots of a plus b times a plus b squared, which is a plus b cubed. a plus b, a plus b squared over 3 squared, 9 times 3, 27. <sighs> so, what have we got? We need the area now. Ah, we're times that by b plus a. I'm starting to see the answer. So the area, shall we do that here? I'm going to be cheeky, mate. Ayo, hey, you guys know what I'm doing, yeah? So the area is this, the y height times the base. a plus b times this would just make that power 4. Nice, dude. So show that this division is k. So we're doing g, which is this, divided by this. So g over area, I'm just going to write area here, is a plus b to the 4. over 12 divided by this, which when we do KSC, crazy, right? Things you learn in year five appears in the advanced extension award. So divided by this will be times 27 over 4 a plus b to the power of 4. Cross cancel. There's the independence of a and b. Uh, to simplify this, I guess we do some cross cancel. Come on. All my year sevens watching this video, CCs and that. So divide by 3, 12 divided by 3, 4. 27 divided by 3, 9. And there we go. We get 9 over 16. And that is our answer for 8 marks. And that is it, guys. So this is an incredibly interesting question. I wouldn't say it's the hardest AEA question. I'd probably say this is quite a mid question. There's definitely some crazier questions um, that were asked in this. Uh, but yeah, guys, the techniques that we employ here are definitely relevant still to your A-level maths because all of this is based on normal A-level math stuff. Okay? So, if you learned something today, hit the like button, save this video for as part of your revision. Uh, and subscribe for more maths content. Join the Lung Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions. 
And if you're interested in my A-level courses, links are in the description. I'm also running uh, Easter revision courses as well. Again, information is in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice.